Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 8 in PySpark playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to write data frame into a parquet file using PySpark. In our past video, we have discussed about how we can read a data frame. I mean, how we can read a parquet file and place it in a data frame, right? But now, in this video, we are discussing about how we can write a data frame into parquet file. That means if you have some data already loaded into data frame, now you want to place this data into a parquet file using PySpark. Along the way, we can also discuss about saving modes. When you are writing data frame data into parquet file, you can save the file with a different modes actually. That also we will be discussing that. I will strongly encourage you to watch all my previous videos in the PySpark playlist. The reason is all videos are in a sequence order if you see all of them one by one then you will get a good idea about PySpark. so let's continue with this video so there is something called write dot parquet function on top of the data frame object that will help you to write the data frame data into parquet file let me practically show you that so let's go to our browser where we have databricks workspace already opened and here let me go to workspace users and let me open my user id and here let's try to create a new data frame and maybe let me write like write data frame to parquet so this is what the file name i want to give default language is python so i am attaching with this cluster and let me hit create button to create a notebook here so notebook created successfully and now here this is where we have to write our code right first let's try to create a data frame with some dummy data so let me create a variable called data and inside this variable i want to store a list list of tuples so in the first tuple i have like id1 then mahir then comma then let me create second item as tuple and here my two then wafa okay so it is a list of two tuple items okay and then let me create another variable called schema and then let's try to use a list here with the string values id and name so if you have seen my previous videos you know how to create a data frame with some dummy data i have already discussed that so i am doing the same thing here okay so let me hit shift enter to execute this code here okay so here the in the data bricks you will be having a spark session object by default using this spark word here then dot control space here if you see there is something called create data frame function to this function there is something called a data parameter to the data parameter let me pass my data variable which holds a list so this data will become rows then there is another parameter called schema to this schema parameter let me pass my schema variable which holds this list now what will happen this entire code is going to create a data frame these values will become column names on the data frame and these values will become like a rows let me practically show you that so this entire code creates a data frame so let me store the data frame object into df variable and then let me use a display function inside a display function i am passing my data frame now hit shift enter to execute this command and see what will happen so command is running running good here so let's wait for the execution to complete here see command executed successfully now if you see it created a data frame which has two columns id and name so till here everything is good so now this data i want to store it into a parquet file how to do that so for that on top of this data frame object so data frame object name is df right so let me use df dot control space so there is something called write attribute that will give you a object of the data frame writer so let me practically show you that as well so let's use let's use a help function as i did in my previous videos to the help function i am passing this data frame object right instance so let me hit shift enter to execute this cell here and now if you closely observe the documentation of this it says it is a data frame writer class object and also if it says inside this class there are couple of methods if I scroll down, there is a CSV method that helps to write the data, data frame data into a CSV file format. 
and similarly if i scroll down there will be a method or a function that helps to write the data to a parquet file so let me scroll down here i will show you that see there is a parquet function also available inside that class that helps to store the data frame data into a parquet format and this function will take couple of parameters and the de description of each parameter is available here so path parameter will take the location where you want to store that parquet file so that data details you have to supply as a string value and similarly there is something called mode this is what i was saying about savings mode and if you see here this mode parameter will take these values append overwrite ignore error i will discuss this in a just bit let's try to do one thing so this data frame whatever we created here let's try to save this data frame into a parquet file so let me remove this code here so data frame dot write control space write dot control space then parquet see parquet function is there to this function i have to give the path in a string format so let me let's try to save this parquet file into my data frame databricks file system so let me navigate to data menu here and here if i go to databricks file system under file store um, let's try to create a file called park parquet output okay so let's try to use that so if if you remember in my previous videos you know that in the pyspark you cannot directly write the data into a file with a name it will create a partition files right let me practically show you that so let's go back to data first dbfs then file store let me copy this under file store maybe parquet output that's what i want so here if i go here and let me go to my code so under file store i want to have a parquet output so this is the dot parquet file so this is the file i want but this like this explicitly creating a file with some name in the pyspark directly will not happen for that you need to use a trick that we will discuss in our upcoming videos but let but let me practically show you that so let me hit shift enter here to execute this code here you can see code is running good here so once the execution completes let's navigate to this location and see what will happen now if i go to data for data menu and if i go to dbfs files you can see it created a parquet output dot parquet but not as a file it created as a folder and if i go inside a folder that's where i have the data and this three files right part files you see the tooltip the extension of the file is parquet so all these three files are parquet files that means all my data stored into these three parquet files actually and whatever the name i given that became a folder here in the pyspark by default this is how the nature okay so whenever you write some data in any format it can be csv it can be json it can be parquet always it will create the folder with that name inside that it will create these part files so what if if i want i don't want like this i want to create a parquet output dot parquet file directly and in that file i want to have the data will that possible then the answer is yes but for that you need to do some tricks actually that we will discuss in our upcoming videos so for now you keep this thing in mind that it will create a folder and inside that it will keep your data as a part to files now let's go back so let's try to write our data into parquet dot output folder only let's not give any dot parquet extension because it is going to create a folder anyways so let's execute this shift enter now let's wait for the command execution to complete command execution completed if i go to data folder dbfs you can see parquet output folder is created and we have the data here so to make sure let's try to read the parquet files data from this folder into data frame and see whether we got our data correctly or not so meanwhile let me delete this uh, i just shown you this uh, as a worker on right okay or else i will delete after some time you can delete the files and you can delete that but that's fine for now so now let me do one thing here so let me use that in the previous video we discussed the spark dot read dot parquet function will help you to read the parquet file data right so let me take this entire path and supply that path here and this will create a data frame object so let me use a variable called df1 to store the data frame and then let's use a display function 
to the display function let's pass data frame 1 now let me hit shift enter to see whether this data frame data got stored into my parquet files properly or not so let's wait okay there is some error it looks so let me use display ds display then df1 okay so let me hit shift enter now and let's wait for the execution to complete here once the execution complete we should see the same data in this path also see we got the data that means we were able to write this data frame data using this code into a parquet files successfully now this parquet method also has something called mode right so to the mode parameter we can supply few values so let's try to understand the behavior of them so if i go to next slide as i said mode parameter will take these values overwrite append ignore error overwrite means it is going to overwrite the existing parquet file data for example i have id1 mahir and also i have id2 overwrite if the same data frame if i write once again then it is going to add these two rows once again into that file uh, sorry it is not going to write right but it is a overwrite it will delete the existing data and the new data will be added and append means it will append the data into the existing file so let's try to understand this append first then we will come to overwrite so that you will make sense of it so let's go back to our uh, our portal where we have opened our uh, databricks workspace here this thing right in the mode let's try to use append so when i try to use append what will happen currently in this path we have a data and these two rows we contain and this data frame has these two rows again so let's try it. we are trying to write these two rows once again into the same path into the same path so that means once this command executes finally we should have four rows two rows with id1 two rows with id2 let's execute this by hitting shift enter and see that see my command is executed successfully here now if i execute this to see the data from that location we will be having a four rows you see mahir id1 two times id2 two times the reason is we are using a append mode so data is getting appended there so instead if i use overwrite what will happen whatever the data you have in this location that will be overwritten that means the data present in the location will be deleted and whatever the new data i am adding that data only will be present so let me hit shift enter to so execute this cell now and then see we had a four rows right now this time if i execute this we will be seeing only two rows the reason is that four rows got overwritten okay and another thing is there is something called error mode so that means let's assume this location already has some data but still you want you are trying to write some data into this location once again so in that case it will error out saying data is already there let me hit shift enter to execute this you can see it says data is already present now the last thing is instead of error there is something called ignore that means if this location already has a data then simply ignore it don't write this data so that's what this mode says if i hit shift enter now now command executed successfully without any error and if i execute this command 3 we will be still having only two rows only so that's how this saving modes will actually help you when writing data into a parquet file i hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much